Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to another episode of the Washington Commanders franchise here on Madden NFL 24 and today we're going to wrap up season number two here in the franchise as the Commanders are at home facing the 9-7 and seven Atlanta Falcons. Our Commanders sit at 6-10, and 10. they are firmly eliminated now from playoff contention after losing three straight, but... They want to end the season on a high note because we don't even own our first round pick. So it's not like we're playing for draft stock. So instead, we're going to try to spoil the Falcons and give them a little bit of a bumpy road going into the postseason. Now, before we get into the game, there's going to be one change on the starting lineup as Braden Daniels is actually going to get the start at right guard today. He was our starting right guard last year before we signed Matt Filer in free agency. But our run game has not been very good the past four weeks. So we're going to try to switch it back over to Daniel, see if that helps. Kirk Cousins is going to start today for the Commanders and what could potentially be his last game, not only as a commander, but in the NFL. There's been rumors that he is not going to be brought back to Washington next season, and let alone what his career has in store for next year. But we're here for this one, Week 18. If you're excited for this one, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. And here comes Captain Kirk. Getting his swing song game potentially for the Burgundy and Gold. 4,100 yards, 25 touchdowns, 23 interceptions. Just too high on the INTs on the year. Otherwise, it hasn't been that bad. They're going to start on the ground with Antonio Gibson. And they're going to go right side, right behind Daniels for a 15-yard run. So, trusting the new right guard. As the next play, it's a run to Singletary. And he rips off an 8-yard gain. So, already a better start to the run game than we've seen the past month. Second and two, they're going to go play fake off of it now. Cousins, though, checks it short to Singletary, who makes a move, breaks the ankles of the defender, and gets out to the 39. A good start to this drive. Gibson now checks back in. First and 10, he gets the handoff left side. He gets a great block from Samuel, and that springs him to the 25-yard line, and the run game is hitting early. Singletary checks back in, keeping the running backs fresh. But on first and 10, Cousins is sacked. He loses the football, but he fortunately gets his own fumble that's a loss of 12 now second and 22 setting up a screen for Gibson but he runs into the back of Andrew Norwell so he only gets one and now it's a third and 21 for Washington Cousins back to throw he gets sacked again he fumbles picked up by Charles Leno welcome back to the lineup as he was the one who actually gave up the sack so at least he gets the fumble and this promising drive ends in a hurry That'll bring out the Falcons offense led by Desmond Ritter. The Falcons, they're 9-7. They have easily won the NFC South, which is a very poor division. But they're currently the three seeds, so they are fighting for playoff positioning behind Ritter. They start on their own 20-yard line. The start with the pass at the middle. It's incomplete. Nice coverage by Fuller on Drake London. He's played pretty solid this season. Second and 10. Looking left side now. Floats it for Keenan Allen in the former Charger. Gets out to the 47-yard line. Allen signed the big three-year $47 million contract in the offseason to come to Atlanta. And he's been a big help for Ritter. That's a three-yard loss, though, for Robinson as Jonathan Allen gets another tackle for a loss. Second and 13. They go back to Robinson, and he gets two. So it's a net of negative one on his past two plays. Big third and 11 out. Ritter's going to go empty, and they're just going to set up a screen short, and it's swallowed up. Big hit by Chase Young, and Matt Burgeon is on hurt for Atlanta. He is questionable to return. So the team's point on their first drive. As here's Washington again running the football. Antonio Gibson with another first down run. Next play, they check it down to Singletary out of the backfield, and he's got some space, outruns the defender, gets out to the 32, and it's been all Singletary and Gibson Today, they are having themselves a great start to this game. Next play, tries to dump it off to Singletary, but this time Atlanta is ready for it. Great tackle there by Richie Grant, the second year, second round rookie, excuse me, out of Central Florida with the snag. Second and 14, Gibson, though, gets eight yards, and it's third and two. So now making it short, Singletary checks back in. Two tight ends of the formation. They give it to him, and he's got a big hole left side. Norwell moves the man out the way. Singletary's in the red zone now down at the 13-yard line. Cousins, though, will go empty next play. Pump fakes. Fires right side. McLaurin in the corner, but is batted away by A.J. Terrell. Now going back underneath center. Singletary's in the backfield. He goes left side. Not much there on this second down run. That's going to make it third and seven. Cousins has trips to his left. Three-man rush here from Atlanta. 
Cousins, though, going to roll to his right. He's being chased, and he's just going to dump this one to the sideline. And Washington will kick three, making it three to nothing. So second drive here for Atlanta starts with a quick pass right side. And Devin Duvernay gets away from the defense. And Duvernay's going to go all the way. A 75-yard catch and run for the former Chicago Bear. And he gives the Atlanta Falcons a 7-3 lead to end the first quarter. After that massive 75-yard touchdown, Atlanta now has the lead. Washington, though, trying to answer back. They're at the 31 of the Falcons. And Cousins sits in the pocket on second down. He finds Samuel cutting across the field. He gets inside the 10 down of the 6. Goal to go here for the Commanders. Great poise on that play by Kirk Cousins. Next play, he's trying to make some changes at the line, and it looks like Singletary jumped the gun a little bit. That's going to back him up a false start. So now first and goal from the 11. It's a naked bootleg. Cousins fires on the run. He has Eric Ali for a touchdown. The five yards doesn't matter. Eric Ali puts it in the end zone for the first time today. And it's now 10-7. Next play. Play fake doesn't fool Jeremiah Trotter. He sacks Desmond Ritter on the next offensive play. And then a two-yard loss for Robinson makes it third and 18. Ritter to throw. He gets chased out of the pocket. He dumps it to the sidelines, and Atlanta goes three and out. Washington now with the momentum. Their next drive takes them to their own 44. They give it to Gibson left side, and he's going to pick up eight. Already over 76 yards rushing and only six carries. Second and two, Washington tries to go play fake, and this was a shovel pass, and it's almost intercepted. Bryce Huff dropped it. Now third and two. Commanders are just going to go back to the ground. Not going to try anything funny. And it's going to be Gibson with a first down run and more. Absolutely breaks the ankles of Bates. Jukes out another defender and he gets out to the 11. What a run by our superstar hatback. We haven't seen this in quite some time. And I'm glad it's back. Next play, Gibson on the pass. He gets a touchdown, an 11-yard reception. And Antonio Gibson scores. Second passing touchdown of the day for Cousins. It's 17-7 Washington. Atlanta has to try to answer. Washington has all the momentum. Is here at their own 40. There's a five-yard pass to Robinson, who's been bottled up today. Now going underneath the I formation. It's a give to Robinson, and Johnson shoots down on the blitz. That's a loss of four. Negative yardage on the day for Robinson. And now it's third and nine. Ritter's going to go empty. Four-man rush. Rolls to his left. He's being chased. He dumps it to the sidelines. Pressure continues to get home. That's another punt force. This defense, other than that 75-yard play given up, has played pretty well. Corey Bjorkes punts it again, the former Cleveland Brown punter, who was actually signed at the beginning of the season to a one-year deal. And he actually got an extension. Jahan Dotson will get it out to the 33-yard line. That's where Washington will start their next drive, and it'll be a one-yard loss. Bryce Hug lifts Gibson well off the ground. Easily his worst run of the day. Second 11, Cousins stays in the pocket. He finds Dotson. He's going to be uplifted, but he has a first down. Cousins, great poise today in the pocket. If this is his last game as a commander, he's going out firing. New set of downs, handoff to Gibson. He's going to be wrapped up by Grady Jarrett for no gain. Now third and 10, Cousins goes empty. Drops back the throw. Fires it short for Mo Ali Cox. He's going to break a tackle and pick up a first down. Mo Ali Cox even gets a first down on the catcher on a great play. And the veterans are showing out on the final week of the year. That's a nine yard run for Gibson. He's already up over 100. He's got a buck 20 to be specific. Second and one, bubble screen for the rookie Wilson, and he's going to pick up a first down. I'm excited to see what he does. He's had a pretty solid rookie year, and I want to see what he does in his next campaign. New set of downs. Cousin checks it short. Samuel has some space to run, and he's going to get inside the 15, and Curtis Samuel puts this again in the red zone. Washington with another chance to score. They go to Singletary, who loses one. Zach Harrison hurt on the play for Atlanta. Now empty here. Second and 11, Cousins back to pass, fires a dart right side, and is caught by McLaurin for another touchdown. That's a first half hat trick for Cousins. It's a 24 to 7 lead. Washington, all commanders here in this game. And is now Atlanta just trying to get something going. That's Robinson who finally gets into the plus yardage, has a whopping two yards. Second and inches, Ritter fires left side. That's caught. Nice grab by the rookie Johnson. And Atlanta now into Washington territory. First and ten, three tight ends in the formation. Ritter feels some pressure. He throws this one left side, and he's intercepted. Pick
picked off by Cameron Curl. That's the 13th INT of the season for Ritter. And we'll go to the two-minute warning. Washington with the football. And they're trying to put more points up on the board. They're at the 43 of Atlanta. First and 10. Cousins short left side. Eric Ali, the rookie tight end out of Iowa, gets a first down. That gets him to the 32. Next play, Singletary in motion. It's a quick hitter left side for McLaurin. He holds on through contact. And again, Washington in the red zone. A minute left to play. Cousins, quick pass left side. McLaurin, he gets a grab down at the one-yard line. Washington with a great chance to score some more points. They go run on the next play, but it's completely blown up. And Singletary gets stuffed for a loss of four. Washington then will run the clock down. They don't want to give Atlanta any time as here's a second goal run and that gets them forward back to the one. But Washington, they're letting this clock run down. We're now at five seconds and Cousins is going to snap it, throw it short. Turner doesn't get in the end zone and that's going to end the half. So bad clock management to begin the first half. They could have had more points. But other than that, it's been all Washington here outside of the 75-yard strike. Commanders lead 24-7. to seven. Well, we're not going to make the postseason. Atlanta is clinched the playoffs, and they've won the NFC South. But there's a lot of other good games going on here at Week 18 that means something. First game we're going to start off in Philly. The Eagles hosting the Lions. The Lions, they lose 28-24. to They fall to 8-9, but they could still potentially get in on a wild card, believe it or not. But Philly, they're the hottest team going into the playoffs. They do not want to play the Eagles in my wild card round. A little bit west in Pennsylvania, the Steelers host the Raiders, and Pittsburgh leads 14 to nothing as the Steelers look to win the NFC, AFC North. Excuse me. All of the AFC spots are locked in, which is kind of surprising, but we know all seven teams in the AFC. And then finally in Dallas, the Cowboys, they beat the Giants 28 to seven. Philly's been hot, but Cowboys still the team to beat, while the Giants will fizzle out at eight and nine. Daniel Jones, three interceptions. Tell me that's not Daniel Jones. Back to our game here. It's a three-score game as Atlanta will at least start off with a football. But much like the first half, Robinson Jr. has nothing to gain. Our run defense has been phenomenal all game. Second and ten. Ritter's forced to the air again. He doesn't feel comfy in the pocket, so he just throws this one away. Ritter's just not been comfortable at all. He's been scrambling outside. There's been pressure getting home. And now on third and ten, a four-man rush. Ritter again will roll to his right, and he's going to take the sack this time. Chase Young brings him down. Our pass rush as they're just pinning their ears and getting to Ritter. So three and out for Atlanta. Gives the ball back to Washington. They're going to start with nothing on the ground. That's a good stop by Bryce Huff. Second and ten, keeping it to Singletary. He's bottled up again. Somehow finds three. That's going to make it third and seven. Washington with trips to the left. They're going to go back to the air here as Cousins fires across the middle, and he has Mo Alley Cox. Great job by Cox to sit down at the line to gain in the zone coverage and pick up the first down. That's just a great veteran move. Next play, Singletary gets free again inside the 40 of Atlanta as we get four minutes into the first or the second half. Excuse me. Gibson checks back in. He breaks the tackle left side, and he continues to get plus yardage 12 for 132 and remember he has a receiving touchdown as well second and two Singletary checks in he gets the first down the commanders have done a phenomenal job just keeping the halfbacks fresh and it's paid off today three tight ends but Cousins is going to go play fake they're going to try the shot play instead this one's just going to be deflected out of bounds Atlanta was all over that second and ten blitz up the middle Cousins tries to throw it short and Bates almost picks it off that was a great read by the veteran safety, but all of a sudden Washington has just gone away from the run. I don't know why, as on third and ten, they try play fake. Samuel is open, but this one's thrown out of bounds. And they throw the ball three times, get nothing, and it at least gets them a field goal, but puzzling play calling down the stretch. So it's still a three possession game, so Atlanta needs to get something going here on this drive, though. That's a nice six yard connection to the rookie Johnson. Now second and four, Ritter short, and this one is dropped. Trotter is in the area, but you got to make that grab. Makes it now third and four. Bunch to Ritter's right. He's going to throw forward a four-man rush, but again, pressure breaks through, and he steps up right into the arms of Chase Young, his second sack of the day. Another punt force for Washington's defense. 
They have been all over the backfield today. Atlanta's offensive line can't block for Ritter. So Washington had the football back. There's a nine-yard run again for Gibson. Surprise, surprise. Second and one, now Singletary right side. And again, another first down on the ground. This could be a record-breaking day for this Commander's ground game. They're tallying up a ton of yards. Gibson especially gets another carry, and it's another first down. He's up to 153 and only 14 carries. They're just on the back of the halfbacks. Here's Singletary again, right side, gets a crease. He gets past the defender, tiptoes the sideline and finds the end zone. What a run by Devin Singletary to tiptoe the sideline and find the end zone. It's now 34-7 to in favor of the Commanders, and Atlanta's still going backwards. A false start there on Chris Rindstrom makes it first and 15. They give it to Robinson. I don't know why they're still running the football. He's got seven yards today. Now third and 13, Ritter's empty, and Washington's just going to bring pressure. They bring five, and Ritter gets sacked again. Montez Sweat this time brings him down. It is all Washington, 34-7 to going into the final quarter. This game is basically over, so we're just going to kind of speed run this quarter. Here's Washington again, fourth and goal from the one. They don't get in. A great play by Arnold Abiki to stop him. But unfortunately, Atlanta would again go three and out, so they get the ball right back to Atlanta, or to Washington, excuse me. And look at the blocks by Mo Ali Cox to spring Gibson for 41 more yards and a touchdown. Mo Ali Cox just blocked two men out the way. He's having himself a sensational game. He hasn't had the best year, but he's showing out today. It's now 41 to 7. On first and 10, Ritter actually finds Robinson Jr. out of the backfield, and he's going to actually score, so Atlanta will tack on. Another seven points as Ritter gets more yardage. But again, at the end of the game, Commanders on the doorstep. Here's Singletary. It's another touchdown. Washington puts up 48 on Atlanta. And that'll do it for this one. Washington with a statement win. They send the fans home happy to end the season by a final score of 48 to 14. Atlanta, they're going to have to figure something out because this was not a good way to go into the postseason. Well, unfortunately for us, though, our year is over and at least got to end on a high note. Cousins played absolutely sensational. He really didn't have to do anything in the second half. And how about that? We had 411 team rushing yards. That is the second most all time. We were only 12 yards shy of the record, which is 423 set by the Giants in 1950. So the running performance you saw today was truly, truly sensational. Here are the scores in Week 18. We're going to recap most of them as we're going to start off with the Cowboys, of course, beating the Giants. We did see this game, but I do want to highlight it again because Dallas is going to be the one seed. The NFC is going to run through Jerry's world, so can anybody go to Dallas and stop the Cowboys? Only two teams have done it this year. In a game for the NFC North, the Vikings beat the Packers, and this was probably the biggest game of the week because with this win... All the teams going in were 8-8 eight eight in the NFC North, and the Vikings get the win, and they get the tiebreaker, so they win the division, and Green Bay is going to go home. They don't make the playoffs with that loss. On Sunday Night Football, the Chiefs beat the Bills and what a lot of teams think are two of the best teams in the AFC. The Chiefs are going to be the one seed, so the AFC will run through Kansas City, which, like Dallas, is going to be hard to beat. So a nice win there for the boys in red. Here are your players of the week. Gibson gets it with his 216 rushing yards and two touchdowns. Hufanga gets it with an INT. It wasn't Diggs or Alexander who had two INTs. Instead, it was Hufanga. Mosley had an INT for the Jets, and Richardson threw for four touchdown passes to end his season with Indy. So how is the playoff bracket going to shape up, specifically the NFC? And here is your bracket. In the NFC, it is going to be the Cowboys, the 1, the 2, the 49ers, who have also played great. The Vikings, the 3. The Falcons fall to the 4, which means they got to host Philly. That is not the team you want to face. The Giants do end up actually making the playoffs, despite having a losing record. And same with the Lions. So the NFC was really weak. Well, the AFC, all those seven teams are already clinched. But you can take a look at the bracket here. We are not in the postseason. So next time, we are going to get started getting ready for our next off season. Next episode, we'll wrap up season number two. We'll highlight the team, recap, simulate the postseason, see who makes it to the Super Bowl, and then I'll probably live stream the Super Bowl just like I did in year one, probably sometime next weekend. But 
we're ready for another offseason here in the Washington Commanders franchise as we get ready for year three. And I feel like we're making pretty good pace here in this series. I've never done a football franchise more than three years, and we're on pace to well break that. So I'm excited for the rest of the series. The support from you guys has been awesome. I can't thank you enough for all you've done for this series. I've enjoyed it. I'm ready for year three. I'm ready to try to take this team to the postseason for the first time. I think we have some good building blocks in play, but that's for the future. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.